So some of our questions come to us from when I posted on Facebook asking for people to ask their questions and a couple of them also have come from some recent tours that we did. How awesome! Does someone come out to inspect us or to look over your records? Excellent question and they sure do. State and federal both come out, they look at your facility, they see if you meet with the guidelines as far as pens, caging, um, how well your animals are taken care of, um, do you need to make any improvements, Ours is a little bit of a joke because we sit between three and four GNR officers who are here quite frequently. So um, they're like, we already know that's good, Karen, but they go to Stephen and they want to see the records, what we've taken in, when the releases, um, and every animal or bird that we take in, there has to be notations. Did they see a vet? Did they have surgery? Um, were they euthanized? Um, all that. Yes, yes, and we're very proud to be able, because I think people should have to do that. I agree. You wouldn't want somebody just randomly taking in animals nope. and not having to keep records of nope. it. No, nope. no. Um, due to all of the publicity about the eagle at Rock Cut that possibly is one of the ones that we released, though possibly not since there are a few more, people have wondered how we know whether or not it's ours or if there's any way that we ever banned or track animals once they leave here so we know what happens. That is an excellent question. We don't know that it's ours. We never banned. That is a requirement of yet another license. Part of it in reality, I admit, is me. When you put weeks, months into rehabbing, I really don't want to get a call from somebody saying that blank just got hit by a vehicle or a Mack truck. Um, I'd like to think that we let them go and they lived that nice long life. Um, we are always willing to help anything. So it doesn't matter if it's one of ours we released, um, there are more juvies out there we have ended up discovering. Some have bans, uh, which none of ours did, but it doesn't matter. If we can help it, we will. Kind of humorous about Rascal, who I've nicknamed him, uh, because he seems to be uh, quite taken with being able to eat all he wants, to the point that he can barely get five feet off the ground. For those who don't know, eagles have died drowning, getting the biggest fish they ever had and don't want to let it go, and they actually will drown. So they, they can be gluts. It's not unusual. <laughs> All right, next question is, when people donate online, okay. how long does it take until Who Haven receives that money? Okay, so I'll clarify so that hopefully I answer the question correctly and you tell me if I do or don't. If you're referring to PayPal, that is almost immediate. Okay, now when I say immediate, I've never accessed it that quick, but I am sure within that day, you know, we would be able to get that money. Now, we're very excited. People lately have started calling, hey, my daughter's having a birthday party, my mom and dad are having an anniversary, grandma and grandpa, they don't, they don't want presents, but they'd like to do all money given to Who Haven on that Facebook account that you can do. That normally takes 45 to 60 days. The only reason I know that is Oh, I'd give or take maybe about five months ago. We did have a couple people and always feel free because one of the things I I am grateful I do is I like I want everybody to know how much we appreciate their donations, whether it's a dollar, five, or five hundred. So you will always get a thank you note. If you don't get one, in a respective amount of time, and this time it ended up being eight weeks, um, please call me, and they did. We had not gotten it yet. There was a backlog, I guess, um, 
and uh, we ended up about 10 days later we got it and out went the thank you notes and on those I actually had phone calls so I also thanked them on that too but yeah um, someone else was inquiring about our requirements for volunteering and whether or not we have paid employees. Okay, now I will ask you. Um, so you're referring to volunteers, not interns at this particular moment. It said volunteers, so I would say that's what we're talking about. Okay, well it's kind of cute. Um, my humorous statement, if we had employees, they would get paid, but we do not. Um, we have lucked out for well over 30 years with good people like you and everyone else. We are still 100% volunteer, including myself and Stephen. Um, so there is no money that way. Um, volunteers, I used to have a hard, fast rule. You had to be at least 14. Since then, I have wavered to make it individual. It is now on an individual basis. We really do not, we can't take lower than 12. That is for insurance reasons. But we soon discovered, my volunteers would come to me and say, oh my gosh, this little gal is so adult, follows instructions, you know, and whatever. Um, that now if a mom's got a, a young lady who's 12 or 13, she wants to plead her case, I have them come out, I chit chat, and then we give it at least a trial. Honestly, I do not believe I've ever had to let someone go um, because that's usually how awesome they are. All right, and is there, other than the age requirement, is there anything else required for volunteering out here? No, and what I want to put out there is we've had people, and I get this from the volunteers, we had um, a father-daughter go, we want to do a father-daughter volunteer for 60 days for school. Oh my God, that was so cute. Mother-son volunteer. How awesome that your bonding time, no other family members are around, that's between you and dad or you and mom. So, I, and I love that kind of stuff. Um, um, you know, we do qualify for community service hours, school scouts, probation, if somebody's gotten into a little trouble, driving too fast, or whatever, we qualify for all of that. And because we have animals, and we're here seven days a week, there is no problem on whether oh, well, I work five days a week, or I work six days, that's okay, we still have you beat. We're here seven. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, next question. After releasing an animal, has it ever come back, either due to an injury or illness, or just because it sees this as its home? You know what? Um, we have 35 release sites. We purposely try to get away from here. Um, I would say about 25 years ago when we, we have a lady now that does songbirds, but when we were still doing them, I did release a little sparrow and a grackle that actually came back to the uh, porch for about a week getting fed and whatever before they went out on their own. But no, I'm, I'm very, you know, glad to say. And Last one isn't so much a question, okay. but it was something brought up that led to another question that I actually had. So, someone wanted to know more about owls and birds and said that they would love any information. So, would you be okay with doing a series of videos of facts about different animals that we have out here at Who? Oh my gosh, Mirabelle, that is such an awesome idea. I would love that. And if you would like to fit into that, you know, we can give ours but three questions that, that everybody, you know, I'll give the one everybody says, oh, owls can turn their head all the way around. No, they can't. I won't answer that completely now, but they can't. But yeah, w would love to. My, in case someone doesn't know or they're new with Who Haven, not only are we working on, you know, rehabbing, 
raising um, animals and birds, but we want to help heal Mother Earth. You know, um, for the kids that are 10, 20, I want Mother Earth to be so pristine when they hit 60 that they're like, whoa, this is awesome. Our goal out at Who Haven, and anytime anybody comes, any one of the volunteers will help them, but that's also part of our program, is things that you can do to help Mother Earth heal, do better from the things that have already been done. And actually, I do have one other question that cool. I just thought about. Someone came for a tour earlier this week and had questioned about this during the tour. And we've gotten the question before, so I just thought I'd toss this one in there. Now, sometimes when people go on tours or when we go on a program or event, they'll notice that the birds sometimes have a leather strap that hangs oh. down from their foot. And a lot of people are wondering what these are and why we have them there. Excellent. Oh, that is, the, we've got people really thinking. So, um, here's what it's for. Most, not all anymore, but most of our birds are all um, from rehab. They come in, they have a broken wing, they've got an injured eye, a foot, whatever it is. Then we ask our, our U.S. Fish and Wildlife, is it possible, could we utilize this as an educational bird? Then you have to get letters written from a vet to be able to show that, you know, you're not fibbing or stretching the truth or anything. Okay, after that, as you know, Maribel, they go into a training session. The anklet is what literally goes around their ankle. But the leather strapping is called a jess. So that when we take them out of their pen to a program on walks, they're, um, you know, they get to have enrichment. That is our way to make sure they do not get hurt. Now somebody said, well, how's a bird going to get hurt? Okay, say we take a bird to a fourth grade classroom, okay? Now we don't get asked too much anymore because most people know who we have, but say somebody would say, oh gosh, can you let the bird fly around? It is our policy, not everyone's policy. We all have our reasons. We do not free flight our birds. The reason is many birds by accident have gotten injured. You know, you let the bird out, you usually have three people, a triangle going, so they can fly from person to person. All of a sudden, out of that very good eyesight of that hawk or owl, somebody makes a movement in the classroom, maybe in the window, they see a squirrel scampering, whatever it is, and instead of going to the person, they go to the window. They don't know the window's there, and they hit it. So we keep them safe by having those. Now we do have two birds that we are now working that are on a 15-foot leash that we will let fly, but always making sure they cannot get hurt. But that's why it is so the bird can never, ever injure itself. So it's basically like having a leash on a dog when you take them for a walk instead of just letting them run that. free. That's right. Your dog could be the best trained dog in the world, but all of a sudden a squirrel scampers across the street, here comes a car, and your dog decides that is that moment. Very good. Yes, very much. All right. Well, thank you very much, Karen, Everybody for taking the time to answer our questions. And look forward then. Due to Maribel, we'll look forward to questions and answers on Animal Talk. Yeah. Like it.